Man, I'm bored. <sighs> I want to play a game. One with adventure, one with puzzles. One with a little girl trapped in a tower must climb the tower guided by a wizard in order to defeat a dragon to gain her freedom. <sighs> Wait, what's this? Torin? Ooh, a pancake! Torin is an adventure puzzle game that was released for PS4 and PC in spring of 2015 by an independent games developer known as Sword Tales, or Salad Drows spelled backwards, which isn't relevant in any way. What is relevant, however, is that Torn is the first game this studio has ever developed, which should give us an idea of what sort of games we should come to expect from them in the future. From the game's official website, it mentions the game was a finalist for design art at both the Brazil Game Show and the Indie Pub, as well as received an honorable mention at the Independent Games Festival. Not too shabby for it being their first game. Now let's take a look at it. With our eyes. Using a game controller is the best way to play Torin. Aw, I guess this isn't gonna work. Ooh, look! Dead bodies! Uh, this is gonna be a happy game. So, as the game starts, we watch a man get killed by a dragon, attempt to kill the dragon ourselves, only to have our sword get broken, and have ourselves turn to stone. Oh, and also there's a piece of paper and a wizard. He's pointing up like, oh, damn! Did you just see that? Now it's daytime, and the piece of paper is going on a journey! And there's a baby laying in what is unmistakably strawberry syrup! Delicious! Oh wait, now it's a little girl? Uh, okay... The game then teaches us that we can put our grubby little baby hands on everything, and then it seems like we fall asleep for, I don't know, maybe a good five years or so, cause now we wake up as a much older, albeit still young, girl. We then steal a plant from a dead wizard skeleton who calls us Moonchild, and tells us to climb the tower, and we plant it because it'll somehow allow us to reclaim our memories. Got it! So, why are we climbing the tower, you ask? Well, because according to the story, a bunch of dudes thought it would be cool to build a tower past the heavens to touch the stars and embrace the moon. Probably sexually. But the sun was like, screw you guys, I see you're playing favorites, I'm not gonna leave. So now, apparently, only a girl bearing the hearts of mankind can climb the tower, defeat the dragon, and free the moonlight once more. Wait, 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 wait. Why is there a dragon again? You weren't very clear on that game. Also, free the moonlight? Is it trapped? You kind of left that part out too. So, as I'm sure you all guessed by now, this is one of those games that withholds certain key elements of the story in order to keep you guessing about the bigger picture. The game tells its story in parts, mainly through cutscenes that are either triggered through progression or by interacting with these little monk statues, which we'll get back to in a little bit. Oh yeah! Now we're free to run around and do some exploring! I'm gonna climb this super tall ladder, and I'm gonna pet that deer! Deer petting action! And now it's time for our first puzzle! It's a rather easy puzzle to solve that involves three panels in which you need to step on in a particular order. I unfortunately didn't realize the answer was handed to me right before reaching them, uh, written in the stars in the sky, so I just ran around doing every combination until one worked. I'm good at games! We get a scroll as a reward for our awesome puzzle solving skills, which says some words and does a thing, and then we're off again on our quest! Never mind, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm out! So, every time you die in this game, you are treated to some dialogue with the dead wizard skeleton dude from earlier who says things like, Reject your destiny, and you are like an unhatched egg before a dragon. It is only a matter of time before you are eaten. Hmm, those sure are some wise words. A also, what? When you finally do respond, the game sets you back a bit to the last one of these little checkpoint thingies you pass, which can be a tad annoying, but it's really the only consequence of dying. There are no lives or point systems, just wise words from a dead wizard, and a well-needed nap. Okay, remember when I said earlier we can talk about the monk statues? Let's do that now. When you find these little statues in the game, you can meditate in front of them, and if you do, you enter a dream. 
These are sort of like sub-levels that when you complete them, they unlock some of your memories, aka the story. The first thing you must do is outline a symbol on the ground with salt so the wizard man can say some words, then you're free to carry on to the end. These are mostly optional and are only necessary if you wish to know more of the backstory of the game. But since this is an adventure game where the whole point of playing is to tell you a story, you should probably do them. Alright, now let's uncover this well so the tree we planted 10 minutes ago can grow through it! And we're just so happy about it! I mean look! Look how happy we are! Look at that face! The tree keeps growing, taking a pretty sweet looking sword up with it, which our stubby little arms can't reach, and we now have to go up higher to get it. We fight off some weird looking balloon creatures and push some blocks through a wall to avoid jumping to our death and having to start back at the first puzzle area for the second time. And we have our very first encounter with the dragon! We stand behind some pillars to avoid getting our dress dirty and decide to take a nap and enter our dreams again. Doesn't seem like the best idea at the time to me, but since I have no choice, I guess I'll just roll with it. Also, I'm terrible at tracing lines on the ground with salt. I mean, like, really bad. Just just so bad. We eventually make it to the end of our dream and when we wake up, we're older again and covered in red Kool-Aid. Oh, I'm not gonna question it. Does anyone else have any idea what's going on? Cause I don't. I'm not gonna lie. At this point, I've been playing the game for a good hour or so and was still having trouble putting the pieces together of the story. I know that you're not supposed to understand everything and that's fine. It's an action adventure game that focuses very heavily on its story. If it revealed everything to the player right away, in my opinion, there would be no reason to keep playing it. Sure, the game has puzzles and basic combat, but eh. The puzzles aren't really puzzles. The game practically hands you the solution or method to solve a puzzle before it confronts you with it. And that's not what I'm complaining about. Loads of great games do that, and it's a great method to use, but it requires a bit of subtlety which this game lacks. It doesn't have many gameplay elements to begin with, so the moment something changes, you immediately know what to expect. There's not a lot of trial and error which the game could use more of. As for the basic combat, you hardly ever engage in it. The enemies in the game serve more as an annoyance than an obstacle. The exception of course would be the dragon you encounter a few times, but fighting him is more like a puzzle. The game certainly has a lot of good stuff I enjoyed. For instance, the music is nice and atmospheric. It reminds me a lot of Shadow of the Colossus, which is one of my favorite games of all time. It's the kind of music I'd like to close my eyes and listen to after a stressful day to help shut my brain off. However, it doesn't do a very good job of making me feel isolated or trapped, which I'm sure is the whole point of me wanting to escape this tower in the first place. The visuals of this game are absolutely stunning. I cannot tell you how much I enjoy looking at this game. Everything is just so beautiful and I can't help but explore just to see more of everything. But this brings me back to those monk statues. This has got to be one of the biggest problems about this game and I know this is extremely nitpicky but it seriously bothered me. And that's just how easy these stupid things are to come by. Yeah, okay, well I know I missed the first one, but even that was easy to find once I knew I was supposed to be looking for it. Yeah, I know, something's easy, why complain about it, right? But here's the thing, you make this gorgeous game in order to tell a unique story, decide to make bits and pieces of the story an option to the player, but then give the player no rewards for exploring? Sure, there are a few items you can obtain which are completely unnecessary, but that's really it. If you're going to make pieces of your story optional, then why not hide them to encourage the player to explore and seek them out, therefore making the player more invested in the story while also having another reason to see your game other than just wanting to see it. This game would be so much better for me if the statues were just a bit harder to find. And while we're talking about the story, Torrent's story isn't bad. It's rather interesting once you have enough pieces to start putting it together, and the ending has a bit of a twist which I love. However, when I was first playing the game, I wrote a joke I wanted to use in this video but then realized I practically nailed the twist ending with it and decided to scrap it due to spoilers. So, final thoughts on Torin? It's okay, I guess. Torin is an interesting game with wonderful visuals, decent music, basic gameplay, and a unique story. Although it has its shortcomings, it wasn't bad for Sword Tail's first game. 
It has a price tag of about 10 bucks, which isn't too bad for an indie title, but since it's incredibly short, being about an hour and a half long, and with very little replayability, I'd suggest waiting to snag it while it's on sale. That's it. That's all I got. You can leave now. Goodbye. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, smash that like button with your mouse. And uh, while your mouse clicker's down there, if uh, you haven't already done it, you can go ahead and click that subscribe button. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. <gasps> anyway, I will see you in the next video. Peace! From the game's official website, it mentions the game was a finalist for... Design art. Ah, shit. Oh yeah! Now we're free to run around and do some exploring. I'm gonna climb this super da da da. Every time you die in this game, you are treated to some dialogue with the Death Wizard skeleton dude who says things like words. Uh. So every time you die in this game, you are treated to some dialogue with the Dead Wizard skeleton dude who says things like reject your destiny. D ooh. We fight off some weird looking broom creep 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 Oh my shit! I'm sorry I didn't scare you. Oh my god. <laughs>